All right. <clears throat> Let me get my phone here. So, you know, I look at a lot of images. Um, I like to read magazines. Like, I, I, I've told you in the past, I get the Olympus, like, their enthusiast hobbyist magazine sometimes. And you got some with frames, like this. Um, most times I flip through images, I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, like, it's shape, or it's light, or whatever. But what really gets me is images that cause me to stop and think, like imprint in your brain. Ones that like impact you. And I've noticed the ones that impact me um, are the ones that make me think about things that either I never have to experience because of my life, where I live in the United States, where I live in Michigan, or things that make me think about actions that are happening that I'm not like privy to or I, I am, but I just haven't like thought about what that means. So this happens from time to time, but it's not that frequent because I think um, it's hard to convey a message like that. Like I've seen what people think are some of the best photographs and I can look at those a lot of times like, oh, those are cool. But the ones that make me stop in my tracks are the ones that from like photojournalism, reportage type of photography. Now I'm gonna show you some images and I'm gonna tell you right now, um, if, if this, this is graphic content, if you will, and I've also taken these pictures, um, either as screenshots on my iPhone from an Instagram account, or, um, I just used my camera phone to take a picture of what was in this frames magazine to show you guys. So if you don't want to see any graphic content, not nudity, but like just graphic content, then you probably want to click off of this video. Um, and so I want to show you a couple of these. The first one is from the guy that I met last week when I was traveling. Um, this guy was a photojournalist that does a bunch of different stuff. You know, I think he said he works for Bloomberg or whatever. And we were talking and he was talking about like how he had his Nikon cameras that got shot with a bullet and smashed with a brick. And now he was shooting Fuji and that, that camera looked like it just been through absolute hell. It was horrible. And um, so I decided to go on his Instagram page and Certainly, he's not alone in this. Other people do this, but you think about what the news shows you and what the narrative is on this whole Russia Ukraine thing. There's different sides to this, I understand that. But the one thing that he said was that the news is downplaying big time the war atrocities that are happening from both sides, um, which was interesting. So anyways, I went on his, on his uh, Instagram and um, here are a couple of the images that just stuck in my brain and ingrained it. Again, this is graphic content, so please don't watch this if you're going to be upset or offended. Um, but here are the images. Now, the thing about these is it's not like it's the first time I've seen these types of things before. I, World War II uh, images, stuff from Iraq or whatever, we've seen these things before. But it just makes you think that this is happening now. The U.S. is actively involved supporting Ukraine and whatever role that is. And, and Russia's got its thing going on and it's, it's, it's just bubbling up, it seems like, more and more and more. And to think about that, the United States has never really had to go through that type of stuff. It just makes you stop and think. I mean, there was a civil war. But even like during World War I and World War II, most of that, or all of it basically, besides a couple of attacks, were off of U.S. soil. We're not a country that so far has been prone to attack on our land. And it makes you think about all the innocent bystanders in cities and innocent um, kids and women and children that get hurt. It's just... That type of imagery leaves an impression on your brain. The second set of images I saw were in this Frames magazine. And um, I'll, I'll put those up right now. Again, these aren't as graphic, but uh, for me, they made me stop. So here, here's the images.
Okay, so I'm not like a uh, activist or a vegan or a vegetarian. I very much eat meat. I love meat. But, you know, for someone to go into this environment and show how these animals were being slaughtered and treated and how they were done, um, you know, it leaves, it made me stop and go, wow, that's a very, very powerful image. Um, and, and I think to me, that's the kind of photography that I'm, I'm drawn to. And I think any camera we talk about, we use can do this for the most part. It's what story are you trying to tell? What are you trying to shed a light onto? You know, this person obviously I'm guessing is like an animal activist or whatever it might be. Um, and so that I clearly got that message from, from those pictures and it leaves an impression in your, in your mind of this pig about to get clubbed in such a odd way, such a brutal way. Um, you know, these animals with their hooves tied. Now, I do believe the animals are put on earth uh, to support humans, but um, that's a different conversation, and you might not feel the same. I mean, obviously, if you have a, a pet or whatever it might be, like I, I had a pet dog, like, a, yeah, I don't want to see my dog get hurt, so I'm open for that, that discussion, that debate, but I think if we go into photography, you got to kind of have that purpose of what story are you telling whether it's your family, um, whether it's something like that around a topic, bringing light to a social issue or whatever, uh, or maybe you just like to, to interpret light with shapes and light and, and, and stuff like light shaping. Um, but it's, I think, I think that's what I'd be striving for is to tell a story of an event and to get in deep and talk about these different things. Um, I just want to share that with you because very rarely do I come across images or not so often that I'm like, wow, those are great. Even the ones that people said are great. Yeah. They don't, they don't, they don't leave an image, a lasting impression with me. And those did. I just want to share them with you because I'm curious what your thoughts are on if you were after to do that kind of an event or that type of thing where you're telling a story or you have to get in deep with um, a certain climate that's happening. You know, how do you, how does that change your camera choice? How do you think about your camera at that point? Clearly this guy I met, XH1, that thing's old. This thing was destroyed. He's not looking for aesthetics. He doesn't care. The sensor was good enough for him. That's what, two or three generations old sensor now? Um, same thing as old Nikons. He was more after just using it as a tool. And I got to imagine that most of us would be a lot happier if we thought about our cameras in that way, as a tool. Um, leaving impressionable, lasting images. Like I'm trying to do with my kids. They're not going to matter to many people, but to me they matter. And to my kids they matter, and they're all over the walls. I thought that was interesting. Okay, I'm done rambling about it. I just was looking through this real quick, and I saw that image, and I wanted to share that with you guys. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.